So I was reading Clutch Sports, uh, one of the sources that I read sometime along with a few others, and I ran across a article that they had where they spoke on three possible trade destinations for Kawhi Leonard if the Clippers decide to make a trade for him. And, you know, it was kind of weird to see it because it's like, you know, I feel like a lot of people are just taking this stuff a little bit too far. I mean, we, you know, we really haven't even, you know, um, really digested everything that's happened so far fully because I mean it's like their season just was over like seems like a week ago and you know it's like still you see where it is at this point because you know the Clippers can't do nothing else about it because they're out of the tournament they're out of the playoffs I mean but they you know it still takes a while to digest it all and then you want to see where it goes from here if you know Kawhi and them stay if not but you have to just let things play out I mean a lot of speculation just you know it seemed like you know all the speculation about this this topic about keep whether keep Kawhi and PG or let them go I mean I think it's just it's, it's just all like a, a waste right now you know what I'm saying it's not what the Clippers the Clippers need around them right now you know Kawhi is going through something outside of basketball you know um, him and PG both of them going through injuries trying to get back healthy and you know they can't help they got injured and you know honestly a lot of superstars got injured I mean Giannis got injured Jimmy you know um, Chris Paul got injured you know Jimmy Butler was injured you know Joel Embiid was injured this season I mean so it's not like other superstar players in this playoffs didn't get injured or or isn't injured now so I mean like really when you look at that oh yeah and John Moran got injured for you know uh, a, a minute himself so it's like when you think about it, Kawhi and PG aren't the only stars who got injured other ones got injured too it just must be a bug going around or something like that I really can't say but either way you know, when I read Clutch Sports, they were talking about one team that Kawhi could possibly be traded to would, that would make sense would be the Sacramento Kings. Now, me, I don't think he would fit nowhere with the Sacramento Kings. They're a very young team, and I don't know what... First of all, what what the the Clippers would get back in return that they would want for the value of somebody like a Kawhi Leonard? I really don't. Now, a lot of people may say Kawhi's value might might have went down because he got injured again or something like that, but his value is still the same because he's still getting paid, you know, forty plus million dollars per year, and he's still one of the top players in the league. And before he so called went down, he did have thirty one points in a game two where they stole game one because of his masterpiece, thirty eight points. And the great defense, the meddlesome defense he was putting on Kevin Durant. So it's like he's still at the top of his game. So it's like until we see him come back and can't do the things that he we're used to seeing him do that we saw him do right before he got hurt. And but at the end of the season when he really got healthy going into the playoffs, until we can't see him do that no more, we shouldn't talk about him retiring and, you know, he's washed and he can't play. Let's see what he does when he comes back and play. It all matters then. It doesn't matter what people speculate to that degree let's just see what happens but either way the Sacramento Kings don't really have nothing to give the Clippers back in return so I think that's a waste of time and then the other one was Memphis and honestly uh, first of all we hear reports about Dylan Brooks not being uh, on Memphis hot list or good list so he might not be coming back next season or at least that's some reports I'm seeing myself so I mean if you offer up a trade with Dylan Brooks and some picks and maybe uh, Desmond Bain or something like that I mean I mean, I, even still, it doesn't make the Clippers really better. It doesn't make them better. Like, so that's really a dumb trade as well. Like, the Clippers will only trade a Kawhi Leonard, uh, somebody of that caliber, if it's going to make them as good or better. You know what I'm saying? So I think that's a dumb trade, e even if it was a possibility. I, I think the Clippers would be dumb to make that one uh, as well. And then the other one was the Dallas Mavericks. Now, I'm pretty sure a lot of people would be entertained by that if, you know, Kawhi teamed up with Luka Doncic, but at the same time, don't believe that's going to ever happen because, like I said, Kyrie is there. There's a lot that goes along with that, a lot of variables in that. And I don't really think that the, the Clippers would feel like, you know, they'll be getting anything better with Kyrie based upon, you know, who Kyrie is, what he stands for. And on top of that, you definitely don't know what type of player you're getting in him. I mean, he might just decide to just leave the face of the earth and go to Mars or something like that. And, you know, you don't even know why he left. You know what I'm saying? So Kyrie is definitely not trustworthy and never 
will be trustworthy. So it's like you're not really gaining anything with Kyrie because, I mean, look, since Kyrie came on the Dallas Mavericks, they didn't even make the, they didn't even make the playoffs somehow. I mean, the, the Dallas Mavericks were better before they had him, you know, without him. So it's like when you think about it, Kyrie's presence can be just a, a nerve wreck and it can actually tear your organization apart. We've seen that in multiple situations with him. So, you know, you might get a great player in Kyrie if you trade him for Kawhi, but you don't really know what you're getting as far as Kyrie, the head case that he is in regards to what he's going to throw out there and make everybody in the whole locker room feel uncomfortable about a lot of things that he's saying. And, you know, it just divides a team in half. He's been doing it for a while. And the last time we see him do it was the team that he was previously on, which was the Brooklyn Nets with KD himself and Harden. And we all know how that went. It was a pretty much an epic failure. So this is what I'm saying. The, it's no need trading him to Dallas because it's not really going to make you a better team. You'll be better with Kawhi if you keep him, if you can find a way to keep him healthy, which is I know is a long shot. But at the same time, it's doable because other teams have been, you know, been able to keep him healthy enough to help them win championships. Now, there's been reports coming out in his camp, as I said, that, you know, the Clippers didn't manage him right. They tried to push him back a little bit early, you know, made him come, excuse me, make him come back a little bit early because they wanted to win and they were like sliding as a team they won't play as good as expected even without him so it's like they needed his services and they kind of pushed you know ramped it up a little bit quicker is some of the things i'm hearing so if that's true then i mean hey you know you, you don't know if Kawhi is going to come back or ask for a trade itself or rather than the clippers make a trade for him but i think they got to hope Kawhi Leonard comes back opening up a new stadium along with paul george they really need both of them there because trading them you're really not going to get their value back in return you're going to get some picks and maybe some really good decent players but you're not going to get much back in return because not many other superstar or star players of their calibers out there on the market, at least not at the moment. So, I mean, the Clippers got to think about all that. So, I mean, I know they're thinking about this stuff and I know they put this stuff in perspective. So, I mean, really all the talk about, you know, what teams Kawhi should go to and what teams should trade for him. I don't really, you know, I really wouldn't feed into all that stuff too much because, like I said, the Clippers would be dumb to trade Kawhi Leonard. Um, honestly, I mean, they don't really have have nobody else out there equivalent to his skill when he is healthy so it's like why go get somebody who's probably who might stay a little bit more healthier but doesn't have the talent Kawhi Leonard has to take you over the top and win a championship you'll be right back in the same situation you've been in all this whole time which is a good to decent team but never could win a championship that's what the Clippers always were in the past so why go back to that it would be a waste of time so really the Clippers they're really in a, a catch-22 situation but Either way, they just got to hope their stars stay healthy and maybe run it back with them another year and see how it goes. Or, you know, if their stars walk, maybe they can get something good in return, you know, with the remaining money they have left and hopefully the cap space. Who knows? But I definitely think, you know, it'd be best to keep Kawhi and PG rather than trading them because I don't know who else out there is equivalent to their skill when healthy. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of players that are equivalent to their skill when healthy, but they're superstar players. They're star players. It's not no other type players equivalent to Kawhi and PG skill and, and Kawhi when healthy is a top three player in the NBA when healthy top five player bare minimum so it's like you, you, you're not going to get that type of talent in return either way so it'd be best for them to try to stay and run it back and see what happens